So after a business has decided which strategy to go with to fulfill its objectives, it needs to break down the strategies into the various functional strategies. Now functions here, we're referring to the various departments in an organization. And in this chapter, we will discuss about four departments. We will discuss about marketing, we will discuss about production, finance, and human resource. Now, once the corporate level of management has decided with which strategy to follow for the entire organization, the same strategies will be communicated to the business level of management, which consists of the heads of the departments, who in turn formulate the functional policies. Now here, when I say function, I'm referring to the various departments, marketing, finance, production, and human resource. And these strategies will be implemented at the lower level of management known as the functional level. Now here, it is noteworthy to observe that the business level consists of functions. So there comes the word functions, which is at the second level of management. Their functions refer to the various departments or the various types of work that needs to be done. And the functional level here, the, the interpretation of the word function is operations, the operational level of management. So the lower level of management, which is the functional level, is also known as the operational level. So the, the word function has two interpretations. One at the lower level of management, which is the functional or the operational or the supervisory level of management. And the other interpretation of it is in terms of the various departments, that is the functions. So once a business has identified what strategy it has to follow for the entire organization, and that is obviously decided by the corporate level of management, those strategies will be cut down or broken down into departmental strategies. Obviously all the departmental strategies will be in sync with the main strategy of the organization. For example, I mentioned in the earlier chapters that Apple Incorporated intends to sell eight crore phones of its product iPhone 6 after the launch within three months of the launch. So eight crore phones in three months. Now let us just take an assumption that it wants to sell six crore phones in the first three months from the launch. So this is nothing but an expansion strategy which is decided by the corporate level of management. Now this forces the business to form functional strategies which means each department has to form a strategy so that it can reach the main goal. Now all the departments reaching their goals means the organization is reaching their goal. And obviously there has to be a sense of coordination between the activities of the various departments. So in simple words, the finance department will make sure that the business has the required amount of capital for achieving the goal. The human resource department will make sure that the employees are trained enough so that they can go ahead with achieving the goal. The production department will make sure that there is no irregular supply of the products that the business intends to sell. The marketing and sales department will make sure that they have done the necessary arrangements to go ahead and fulfill the goal of the company. So all the departments will work together and the, the individual departmental goals or the individual functional goals will be in sync or in link with the main goal of the company or the main goal of the business. So in simple words, functional strategy formulation deals with allocation of resources making sure that there is coordination and management of functional areas. So each department has to be monitored as to whether or not the desired results are being achieved or not. Now there are various marketing strategy techniques that a business may adopt. But before discussing this, I would like to discuss the four P's of marketing. The four P's of marketing, also known as marketing mix, which consists of these four factors, is product, price, place, and promotion. Now, each of these four factors is like the wheel of a four-wheeler. And here, there is no spare wheel. So if one of the factors of a particular product goes wrong, the product will not succeed in the market. The product mix 
in terms of the seller's view is customer solution for the buyer. The price mix in terms of the seller's view is the cost for the customer. And the place in simple words means the distribution. How does a business make its product available? So do they give free home delivery or will the consumer need to go and buy from its retail outlet? And the promotion mix in simple words deals with advertising or other sales promotion techniques that a business adopts. The four P's of marketing will be product mix, price mix, place mix and promotion mix. Okay. Now to take a simple example, uh, let's take for example a product like Maggie made by Nestle. Now Maggie, the product is as per the likes, dislikes, tastes, preferences of the people. They've also come up with vegetable atta noodles so as to uh, satiate the needs of those who are health conscious. So the product is certainly good. The color of the product, the shape of the product, the size of the product does appeal to the consumer which is a part of the product mix. Now the price mix will consist of the pricing of the product. Now Maggie starts, if you want to buy a Maggie, the packet starts from 5 rupees, so which is affordable, which is a part of the price mix and any sort of discounts or any factor related to the cost of the product, cost of the product in terms of the cost to the consumer will be a part of the price mix. So Maggie is a product which, are, which is preferred by the people, which is liked by the people and the pricing is kept such that it is affordable. Place mix. Now Maggie is made available through retail stores. Uh, we can probably get Maggie at each and every retail store no matter which part of the country we are in. And the promotion, the ads that they make or the various promotion techniques that they use certainly appeal to us. Now if all these four factors are in the right place, the product goes hit in the market, the product is successful. One of these factors going wrong, the product will certainly not be a hit in the market. I'd like to take an example of Cadbury Boneville. Now Cadbury Boneville had a good promotion. Uh, its initial ads showed foreigners, one eagle coming and pick up, picking up a foreigner and the tagline went something like this, you don't buy a Boneville, you earn it. And a uh, Quite a majority of Indians could probably not connect with that ad because of only foreigners being shown in that ad and the ad being only in English. But still it was good promotion in general. The place mix, they made available Cadbury Boneville at a lot of retail outlets where other products of Cadbury were sold. The price mix was also more or less right. The priced Cadbury Boneville at par with what the price of Cadbury dairy milk silk is today. But what went wrong according to me is the product mix. Now in India, chocolate is a synonym for sweet and Cadbury Boneville is bitter chocolate. It tastes a little bitter, it is dark chocolate. So in India, people relate to chocolate as a sweet and not something that is bitter. And that is one of the main reasons why Cadbury Boneville could not pick up as much as Cadbury Dairy Milk Silk did. So with these examples, I think we can understand how important the product mix, the place mix, the price mix and the promotion mix is for the success of a particular product or a service. Now once we've understood this, let us go back a few slides to understand the various marketing strategy techniques that can be adopted by a business. Now, social marketing. Social marketing is simply where a business will highlight some social cause. Say for example Tata Tea ads where the catch line is Har Subha Sirf Uthomar Jagore which means don't just open your eyes every morning, wake up and which is a little against corruption in the country. Or the ad whereby we're talking about Procter and Gamble where Mr. Anupam Kher is promoting Shiksha, the NGO, wherein a certain part of the product revenue will be given to the education of the girl child. So that in simple words is social marketing. 
augmented marketing is where a business highlights certain additional features of a particular product. Now, one of the most recent examples that we can take is an ad which goes something like this. Asian Paints Royal Aspira. A paint technologically so sound, it comes with a five-year warranty. Now, here they highlight the fact that it is a paint which comes with a five-year warranty. So, that will be an example of augmented marketing. Direct marketing is where they target you individually as a consumer. So, marketing through TV or marketing through emails or SMS will probably be an example of direct marketing. Relationship marketing is where a business creates, maintains and enhances strong value-laden relationships with its customers and other stakeholders. Now, a simple example of that can be given from the fact that an employee of MT Educare will get some discount if he or she wants to enroll a relative or, a, or, or probably a, that person's son or daughter in MT Educare for some course. Now, this is nothing but relationship marketing where a business wants to strengthen the relationship further by giving certain additional benefits which will not be given to normal consumers. And the fact that they highlight this in their marketing will be an example of relationship marketing. Services marketing is where a business highlights services in general. So the ads of various banks, insurance companies, hospitals or colleges will be an example of services marketing because they are not selling anything as such. So basically we are talking about the hospitality industry in services marketing in general. Now person marketing is an example of marketing where we will make use of the reputation of famous celebrities to either create or restore or build the reputation of the business. Now one key example here we can take is when there were a few cold drink selling companies which were under the scanning of the authorities and pesticides were found in their products. Now those cold drink making companies made use of several celebrities to enhance their shaken reputation. Place marketing is where we see tourism ads these days. We see ads of Gujarat tourism. We see ads of Madhya Pradesh tourism, Kerala tourism, Maharashtra tourism. We see ads of Northeast tourism see ads of Singapore tourism, Malaysia tourism. So all these are examples of place marketing wherein the marketing is purely targeted towards maintaining or changing attitude of the people towards certain places. Enlightened marketing is where a business will make the people aware of its customer orientation, the innovation that it is into, the value marketing that it is into, which is the value for money that a consumer receives and so on and so forth. So in simple words, there are various companies which come up with these corporate videos. One thing that I can mention is the video of Tata Motors inspired by people is an example of enlightened marketing whereby they convey to us their value system how they treat their employees, what kind of products they make, what kind of value the, the consumer gets after buying the product, the variety of products. Tata is a business which has diverse products when you talk about its automobile business. From gold standards in SUV cars, SUV is sports utility, utility vehicles, which mean we're talking about the big cars, which are seven-seater cars, eight-seater cars, so all those cars are usually referred to as SUVs. So Tata has the gold standard in SUVs with its range of Land Rover cars. And it also has made the world's most affordable car. So it highlights all these things in its corporate video, which is nothing but enlightened marketing. The next strategy of marketing technique that we will understand is differential marketing whereby a business 
goes behind different segments, different consumer segments to promote its different category of products. And this can also be referred to as target marketing. So, for example, a company uh, like Hindustan Unilever Limited makes soaps ranging from Life Boy to Lux to Pears and Dove. So, it has a differential marketing for each segment, whereby Life Boy is placed in the market as a soap which gives you protection against germs and Lux for enhancing uh, yourself and Dove as a pure skincare product and Pears also uh, positioned as the same with glycerine being the differentiating factor. So this would be an example of a differential marketing. Now synchro marketing is usually for seasonal products or seasonal pricing. Now seasonal pricing for AC or fan, now in the summer season obviously the price of AC goes up which drops down in the winter season. The price of woolen articles goes up in the winter season which certainly drops down in the summer season. This will be an example of synchro marketing whereby the demand for talcum powder generally goes up in the summer season and falls down in the other seasons because normally people relate to talcum powder as something to be used in the summer season only. Now the next point concentrated marketing can be explained with the help of a simple company Ducati whereby as we took an example of Ducati in the focus strategy which we studied earlier. So Ducati goes only after a small group of people which is its target audience. So either a small group of people targeted by a particular company or a big group it will be an example of concentrated marketing. Another example that comes to my mind is a luxury car brand named Aguera which is spelt as A-G-E-R-A -E which has a car priced at rupees 35 crores. So that business will also go for concentrated marketing because the target, the number of people who are going to buy such cars is very small. So that becomes a niche group of consumers for which concentrated marketing is one of the best strategies to follow. And the last point which is called demarketing is where there is an overfull demand and the business would reduce the demand temporarily so that it can restore the supply. Now in simple words, if the demand falls and the supply is more, we need to bring a balance or vice versa, we still need to strike an equilibrium and that is what a business tries to do. Now when the number of people traveling in buses is low, the business will not usually run buses at that particular point in time. Say for example, we talk about tours and travels businesses. So they have certain timings at which the buses leave for various locations, for various destinations. And if we observe generally in the late night time because of the number of people traveling is less or in the afternoon time the number of people traveling is less and the peak hours are usually morning and evening. So the business basically will target this time of the day and will try to reduce the supply at the other time of the day which is the non-peak hours or the off-peak hours. So this will be an example of demarketing. We already understood the four P's of marketing. And after formulating the marketing strategy, the next area will be finance. So in simple words, a business needs to take care of three things. Acquisition of finance, whereby it will decide the source of finance, which can be either shares or debentures or public deposits or bank loans or retained earnings and so on and so forth. So it needs to decide the source of finance. After acquiring the finance, after procuring, after getting the finance, what it needs to do is it needs to handle that money, handle that capital, which is nothing but management of finance, 
which can be done through evaluation of various factors like capital investment, fixed assets, current assets, fund flow, cash flow. And it has to evaluate the worth of the business. Now, just to mention, Xiaomi, the company, the Chinese giant in terms of phone making business, is valued at $10 billion today. Now, $10 billion comes up to some 60,000 crore rupees. And this is one of the ways we need to evaluate the worth of the business. A production strategy will involve two key things about which we will discuss in this chapter, which is logistics management and supply chain management. But production in simple words will involve maintaining optimum balance between the inputs and the outputs, full utilization of capacity, optimum utilization of raw materials, the right layout, the product design, the quality control, the research and development. It has to come up with a good product line, the routing of the raw materials, the scheduling of the operations, the dispatching of the goods and the follow up thereafter. All these are core parts of production strategy formulation. So after a business has formulated the marketing strategy, finance strategy, the production strategy, a business needs to understand that it has to adopt a balanced scorecard approach. Now, A balanced scorecard approach in simple words means striking a balance between strategic objective and a financial objective. Now one simple example that we can take is in terms of MTA Do Care. Now suppose I as a student of MTA Do Care am a little more expectant in terms of service. Now giving more service to me is one of the strategic objectives that is customer satisfaction is a strategic objective of the business for which it may incur a cost. So if it appoints a teacher to give me support, obviously they will pay the teacher. Now for achieving its strategic objectives, it will incur a cost which will probably strike an imbalance in its financial objective because it, go ahead, it goes ahead with calculation of a certain financial amount for various aspects of business. So strategic objectives are certainly important. So providing customer satisfaction is certainly important for a business and also achieving its financial objectives is certainly important for the business. But in case a business has to decide where the inclination should be, it should be inclined more towards following strategic objectives because strategic objectives have a long term impact. So once a business starts achieving its strategic objectives, financial objectives become part of the achievement. So if a business provides good customer satisfaction, which happens to be a strategic objective, that leads to good reputation, which in turn leads to a good word of mouth from that consumer, which will fetch more income to the business in the years to come. Strategic objectives are given preference during normal times, but in difficult times, obviously, the financial objectives become more important. But as I mentioned, if there has to be an inclination, the inclination should be towards focusing on achieving the strategic objectives and not only the financial objectives. As I just mentioned a few minutes ago about logistics management. Now, logistics in simple words refers to the flow of materials and stores from the sources of suppliers to the factory for processing and subsequent distribution of goods to the final user. So the domain of logistics in simple words is procuring the raw materials at the right time from the right source in the right quantity that is in the required quantity not more not less and at the right price. So these are the six R's when, it, when we talk about logistics as a whole subject. So logistics in simple words deals with the fact that a business needs to procure raw materials which will then go in the production unit. The finished product will be made out of it. The finished product will be stored in the warehouses, will be given labeling, packaging, branding, standardization, grading, transportation, 
advertising and so on and so forth and the product will reach the end user which is the consumer. So this is simply the domain of logistics management. So logistics management is more concerned, more connected with the operational part of production. On the other hand, supply chain management is nothing but an extension to logistics management. Supply chain management is a broader concept, is a wider concept than logistics management. Whereby supply chain management also deals with the planning, implementation and controlling of the movement of materials. And supply chain management basically ensures that there is an integration of various functions, which means we're talking about the various aspects related to the production of the goods. So supply chain management deals with product development, which involves research and development, which involves market research. It, it involves procurement of raw materials, which means getting raw materials, manufacturing, which is part of the operations, the distribution of the products, outsourcing if and when required, customer service, which is a very, very, very important thing for a business, and performance measurement, that is performance evaluation. So supply chain management as a concept goes beyond logistics management. So in simple words, we can say that logistics management is a part of supply chain management. Research and development becomes very important for businesses. Now, the automobile giant Volkswagen spent more than $12 billion in 2013 only on research and development. $12 billion plus amount is a huge amount for research and development. Now, research and development is a key thing for businesses which are closely associated with technological products like automobiles. Samsung also extensively spends in research and development. So does Intel. So R&D as a concept becomes very important because it is only through R&D that I will be able to develop a new product or a new technology or bring about a change in my existing product and make it better. So after understanding the marketing strategy, after understanding the finance strategy, the production strategy, I need to understand human resource strategy formulation. Now human resource arguably is the most important resource in an organization. Because in the words of Peter Drucker, a business is controlled, owned and managed by people. A business is what it is because of its people. And rightly said, a business which has less of capital and more of finance. I'm sorry, a business which has less of capital and more of good human resource will definitely have an edge over other businesses because every big journey starts with a small step. So every business which is big today was once a simple thought in the minds of the founders of the business. So in the beginning, they probably would not have had as much capital as they have right now. So it is the people that take things ahead in an organization. And that is one of the main reasons why human resource strategy formulation becomes even more important than other functions. So human resource strategy formulation will involve recruitment and selection. Recruitment basically refers to attracting suitable candidates after which they will be selected on the basis of interviews conducted, uh, on the basis of various parameters decided by the company as per the job requirement. Once recruitment and selection is done, training will be given to the employee with respect to what exactly is expected out of that employee and uh, training will serve as a guidance to the employee for work related activities. Constant development is also given because uh, training is a constant process. So after training is given, there will be performance evaluation, which is appraisal of performance, which means it will be identified whether what was taught, what was informed, what was conveyed in the training is being implemented rightly or not. So in case everything goes right, the employee is rewarded with recognition or the employee may be given transfer or a promotion or incentives. And in case the business feels that the employee is not working up to the mark, 
for the training, for the corrective measures will be taken accordingly. And compensation obviously becomes a part because at the end of the day, uh, every employee is working hard for money. So compensation is something that is uh, in a lot of organizations, not just monetary. It is also in the form of recognition, personal recognition. 